Good afternoon, committee. I'm Miranda Carmen, Secretary of Community and Human Services. Uh, the budget that um, I'm presenting is, it's increased just a tiny bit, but the, uh, the amount is mainly made up in uh, our travel line item, um, just so that we have uh, a little bit more uh, cushion uh, for travel that's, that's needed. I think in the past we had only budgeted for um, the secretary to travel to NCAI, uh, and so there's not, there wasn't any room to, to really do any other uh, travel within the budget. Ms. Carmen. Can yes, I ask you to hold up just for a second? We need to take a break. <laughs> just let's get a, a, maybe a 10 minute break and we'll okay. come back and start with you. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Stretch your legs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I believe everybody's here. We will continue with Ms. Carmen. You'll come to the mic. Thank you for that break. Good afternoon. I'm Miranda Carmen, Secretary of Community and Human Services. The first um, budget, I think, is for gaming, uh, and that's the SRO, Southern Regional Office budget. And so we did propose uh, a salary increase uh, for the site coordinator position and we also brought up uh, the admin assistant to the $15 an hour. When we talked about the site coordinator, um, we also have uh, a Holdenville um, location. Uh, and so um, we're envisioning that uh, the site coordinator will oversee both our SRO office and our Holdenville uh, office and so with that increase in duties we wanted to make sure that she was being compensated uh, and if there's any other you know southern area offices that more than likely this individual would be tasked with um, kind of that direct oversight of, of those offices but I do know that the administration does plan on opening up you know some more regional um, offices to kind of address the needs in in the different areas uh, so that was kind of the the reasoning behind the salary increase for this position. Are there any questions for Ms. Carmen on this budget? from the committee. Are there any questions from council and attendance or online? Okay, well, if not, we will move on to your um, budget for administration and indirect. Okay. Uh, so for the um, IDC, um, is that correct? Uh, so for the IDC budget, uh, there was a small increase, um, as I mentioned before, in the travel um, line item. We did not increase uh, salaries um, at all uh, in this budget. Uh, so the main increase uh, was for the travel uh, because, uh, like I said before, it was mainly to cover um, NCAI and then for us to travel to any of the intertribals that happen quarterly. Are there any questions from the committee for Ms. Carmen? We just have these two. Yes, ma'am. I need to make a statement. Well, I'll go ahead and make a statement. I'd like to apologize. Miss um, Davis, uh, regarding one of her employees, she probably didn't know about this because it was your program that we struck a position from, and that employee is working for you, but she kind of gets in both programs, I feel like, because I hear some things. 
She, she is located in the CFSA office. Um, just, you know who I'm referring to. <laughs> I am assuming that it's the deputy secretary that's listed on my budget. And the one that we struck, we struck some deputy positions. But you created, you recreated one? The same position that was, so, when I came on, left is, it there. hasn't been removed. Is that your doing? This position was created prior to me coming on board. Well, um, you kept that position after we struck it from the budget. Were you here at that time? For last year's budget? Yes. Yes, I was. So you know it was struck from the budget? I know that there was a recommendation, yes for that position to be eliminated. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Harmon? Hearing none, I need, need a motion. I will accept a re recommendation from the committee. Make a motion we approve the Secretary of Community and Human Services as presented. We have a motion on the floor from Representative Huff. Is there a second? Second. Representative Gouge has seconded that motion. Roll call vote, please. Robert Huff? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Madam Chair, there's four in favor and zero against. Four in favor and zero against. The Secretary of Community and Human Services budget is approved. Thank you, committee. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. Next is Tribal Juvenile Justice budget. Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Swope. I'm the Director of Tribal Juvenile Justice. What was your last name again? I'm sorry. Swope, S-W-O-P-E. Thank you, thank you. I think we're ready. Okay. Um, well, just to give a brief overview, um, really the main increases in our budget this year were in our salary um, and fringe area. We requested um, funding for one additional caseworker position. Right now, we only currently have two and a caseworker supervisor. Um, and then I also put in there uh, wage increases for the current staff over the next year um, to give you kind of some uh, logic and rationale behind that. We have a pretty heavy caseload this year. Um, we ended our caseload in 2022 with um, 395 cases. Um, and that's just among three caseworkers. So we have uh, quite a heavy load in comparison to um, similar positions at the state level um, with a uh, lower caseload. I think of about average 15, we have about 30 typically. Um, so really want to bring in more people to help with that and to just compensate our staff for the good work that they do. Um, let's see, some of the other increases. Um, I included more in travel this year because we joined um, a program through our OJJDP grant called Performance Based Standards. Um, and that's basically doing um, satisfaction surveys on the population that we work with to see if we're providing them the things that they need um, in relation to juvenile justice. And it compares us to national standards. Um, so they send us to a conference every year uh, the first year of our participation in their program, they covered that cost, but for years two and three, we're obligated to cover it uh, as an agency. Um, let's see. Some of the other increases to the budget related really to the fact that this was a new program budget um, for the last year's term. And so some of the things really just got, um, I would say, misappropriated mainly. So for instance, when you look at equipment lease rental. Um, previously, it was showing a $0 line. And this year, I requested 6000 because the prior year, we had actually just put that in equipment, not knowing that equipment and equipment lease rental are broken out even further. Um, so some stuff like that. 
Um, we also did ask for more in our direct assistance funding, and that's because that really predominantly goes to our detention costs for kids. Um, it also goes to utilizing things like ankle monitoring and stuff like that that allow us to keep them in the community but still supervised um, in a, some type of way. And then um, some of the other uh, increases like in communications and supplies related to um, a grant that we received. We received um, a grant from OJJDP at the end of last year uh, that is allowing us to hire for a juvenile specific light horse investigator. Um, so they'll be helping with the response to alleviate that burden from light horse whenever um, kids are needing to have a guardian tracked down or be taken to a hospital for evaluation or things like that, just so um, the regular patrolmen can kind of get back to their main duties. Um, and then also helping with some of the investigative portions related to our cases, uh, because currently we really just work with the investigators that are um, assigned adult cases or um, ICW cases. We don't have a juvenile specific one for juvenile justice. Um, and so um, getting their office equipment, their cell phone, their, their items that they need is some of the increases for the supply cost and communications cost and things like that as well. Thank you. We have questions for Ms. Ms. Swope, your name sounds really familiar. Did I know you? I hope so. I was just elected to the um, House of Representatives for Oklahoma. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your report also. Of course. Working for Muskogee Creek Nation. Happy to. Do we have any questions from the committee for Ms. Swope? Any questions from Council Online? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. So move. We have a motion on the floor for second from Representative Marshall and a second from Representative Crawford. Roll call vote, please. Anna Marshall? Yes. Leonard Gouch? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Madam Chair, you got four in favor and zero against. Four in favor and zero against. Your budget is approved, Ms. Swope. Thank you. Thank you. Bado. Okay, next is CHR Tribal. Good afternoon, Randy Colbert, manager, CHR program. Hey, you wanna explain about your budget? All right, uh, just going through here, we have an increase in our salary uh, due to the aforementioned $15 an hour. Uh, we have several of our staff that were only in the 1363 range or hourly range and uh, it also accounts for two new positions we currently transport an average of 563 transports a month and so we are desperately understaffed currently we are we are down three due to health concerns of some of our employees uh, you'll also notice on the GSA, the other uh, line items, <clears throat> our vehicle lease was increased uh, from 200000 to 250000 uh, We had met with the chief, second chief, in the Office of uh, emergency, uh, emergency Management, and uh, due to the safety of our patients, they encouraged us, if we could, to provide to have four-wheel drive vehicles. So all of our vehicles currently are just two-wheel, rear-wheel drive. And so I said, well, we'd have to have a budget increase to be able to handle that cost. And so they said it was, that was doable. And so uh, with the repairs, uh, fuel purchases, line item 53-130, we have an increased uh, 
line item from 3,000 to 7 to cover our fuel costs for our tribal vehicles. We have seven tribal vehicles other than GSA. And those compose of all of our lift vans. We have seven lift vans that we utilize in our travel or transport miles have increased a great deal. And so that's to cover that cost of the fuel. We, we pay that cost for our fuel. Um, let's see, pike passes uh, stay the same. There's an incre uh, increase also on the equipment lease rental from three to, to 8,000. That's to cover our, we have two Mustang copiers, fax machines that we utilize in our offices, one in Coweta and one in Okima. And that's to cover that cost of that. Um, the next item you'll see an increase is telecommunications under telephone. And that's just to, um, to increase that cost to cover the cost of two new employees with work phones. Uh, client services, where it says direct assistance from 75,000 to 85,000, that's the MetAlert device. Um, we currently have about 240 users or subscribers to the MetAlert device, and that's what they wear around their neck. In case of emergency, they can press that button and somebody will respond, emergency personnel will respond. With an increase there, we can get about 32 more uh, devices for citizens. Right now, we're, we're maxed out on our budget, so that's for that increase. Um, contractual, uh, you'll see their scheduling software. We currently, right now, we, we do our scheduling on paper, with paper and pencil in a big notebook. We flip pages to schedule people, um, but with the software, this would, this would enable us to be able to do it electronically, cloud-based, uh, keeps it HIPAA compliant because we still deal with medical. We're, all, we're in the hospitals, we still deal with medical records, and so that would help us with the HIPAA issue. Um, and then at the last, you'll see the printing and publishing line item from 06,000. When we moved over from health to tribal, everything that we had, printing materials, business cards, was all health related. Even uh, numbers, we've changed phone numbers, um, our email has changed, and so that's just to be able to print up new brochures, uh, publicity materials for the program that's current. And so that's the bulk of our budget increases. Any questions for you? Thank you, Mr. Colbert. Other yes. questions for, from the committee for Mr. Colbert, please. Representative Marshall. Um, Mr. Colbert, yes. on your um, CHR generalist, are they assigned to specific geographical areas or is it just on a on-call basis? Yes, we, <clears throat> We have generalists in each county of our nation, okay. and um, they start, like we have McIntosh County, they start at the clinic there in Eufaula. Um, we have a Creek County bunch, Okima bunch. We have one that starts in Holdenville, but they're, they're all in their respective, where they live close to, but they have a starting point where they have to go and call in mm -hmm. and to start their day. No, not everybody shows up at Okima. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the next question that I have is, uh, do you think your CHR program will ever get to the point where it's open on holidays? Because I have a lot of citizens who need transportation to doctor's appointments, dialysis, I mean, other appointments, um, and they're always saying that they can't get one because it's a holiday for Creek Nation. Right. Do you think you'll ever get to a point where you would offer the CHR? We have talked about it if there was some kind of differential pay involved in that because again they want to take their holidays just like mm -hmm. everybody else mm -hmm. but whenever we do have a closure a holiday closure they are required to sign saying they know we're closed and also when we do their assessment they have to provide an emergency transport other than us it's either them or a family member because the same goes with the dialysis center. 
they have to have an emergency transporter if we can't make it. And so that's some of the things that we that we go through. But again, they do they do sign that and they have to indicate how they're going to go to their treatment or if they're going to go or if they're going to take on their uh, food or fluid intake and wait till the next treatment. Because again, one of the times that, that that's why we had that discussion about going to four wheel drive because we had, you know, during that snowstorm a couple of years ago, we had some that missed a whole week because we couldn't travel. And so we met with the chief, second like chief and emergency management, and they suggested we go to four wheel drive if possible, because again, we don't want to put their lives in danger if we have to travel in that kind of weather. But they have those things that they have to do. Fluid intake, food intake, uh, to make sure they can make it to their next treatment. And so that's something we, we make sure they understand because again, weather can close us. And, and, and we've already let them know that the dates are the closure for the holidays during Christmas are coming. And so <clears throat> even though we do that, we still have some that are calling yeah. the chief. You know, they say, why do they get, you know, why do they get, well, it's a holiday. You know, our, our folks like to be with their families as well. But uh, again, they know that and they sign that notice of closure that we're going to be closed and they indicate to us how they're going to go or if they're going to skip because like Thanksgiving is, is a given because most centers are going to say, let's readjust your dialysis time. If you're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, let's move it to Tuesday, Thursday. But they know. They know. We. They know that we're that we're going to be closed because we we tell them that. But they're supposed to have an emergency transport besides us, just in case, because we have flat tires, batteries, cars won't start. Because some of our guys, some of our CHRs transport. They start at three thirty in the morning, and when it's very cold, sometimes batteries won't turn over, and so they have to call them. So you'll have to take yourself today. Our vehicle will not start. So, because we have sometimes we have to we have to bunch them up together to get them to one place. You know, we got when we go to Holdenville, we've got three that ride together because they start their dialysis treatment at five o'clock in the morning. So, but again, they 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 know that we're going to be closed. But again, we're open to seeing what we can do um, if possible because we um, we average about two hundred and fifty transports every month just for dialysis. And not everybody can get there during those times of holidays or weather closures. So, so when did you start your, where they have to sign the closure? Has that been an ongoing thing for the last three or four years, or is it something that you yeah, just started? Yeah, it's it just something that when I started, uh, that's what they signed. Okay. It's, it's kind of like, they also sign a, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it? permission for us to call other agencies to travel to transport just in case like oh, okay. cats or sooner ride uh, things of that nature as well okay okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you madam chair thank you representative marshall are there any other questions from the committee any questions from council online Hearing none, I will entertain a motion at this time. Madam Chair. Yes, can I, Ms. Um, Killian. It's just been brought to my attention. I know they're presenting a budget for $2,223,099. That uh, health was going to be uh, providing part of this funding for this budget. Oh. Um, I did not see that there was um, anything in the health when we had budget reviews for them, is it possible until we get a clarification? Because as far as um, it might change for the tribal funding to just over a million dollars and health was going to provide funding for the remainder of this budget. But I need to get that clarification. Is it possible to um, bring this back on Tuesday? once we get the clarification. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, we'll we'll add it to Tuesday, and we'll do the, the first thing. You'll be there, so you won't have to wait all day to get yours acted next, on. Next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, I was going to make that announcement. Tomorrow's budget hearing has been moved to Tuesday. So it'll start at 1 o'clock Tuesday, but um, yours will be first. So it'll be 1 o'clock for me to be here. And we will take that recommendation and do that. Hopefully by then you'll get a clarification. I hope to get it today. Okay, okay. 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 Thank, thank you. you. Did I thank see you, sir. That? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, Representative Harjo. Yes. You know, the CHR program was always a, uh, a, pro a program that sit underneath the health. And I do know that the health system, they receive actual funding for this program. And at one point in time, the CHR program received a substantial amount of money. And for some reason, the health system began to take away away from their monies and only allowed them to have maybe one or two million dollars of what they were actually given because of from that particular you know grantee or whoever it was that you know designated that amount of funds to them and then now i'm hearing that the health system is going to try to take on a part of that i would like to know how much of that money actually comes through the health system to actually fund this program it might be that the health system itself may be able to go ahead and just fund the whole program without even having their tribe to have to do it because that's where that money starts at is on the health side. You know, maybe that's something too big to look at right now in order for us to approve budgets, but that's just what I'm wondering because there again, internally the health system was taken away from their monies. And now, unfortunately, it's also dwindled this program down to be in nothing more than a transit type of program. And that's something we already have. And when they used to do so much more. And so now uh, CHR, which means, you know, community health representatives, you know, <laughs> that's not necessarily what they are. They're more of a, a transit program. And so I, I think maybe even looking at the definition of all those things and if the health system still has all that money they're getting for them, well then the probability of them being able to support them fully may still be there. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Harjo. Uh, Ms. Killian is going to check to clarify uh, the other question that we had, and maybe she can talk with them about this, this issue at the same time. Yes, I can ask that question. Okay. And then we can get both answered Tuesday one o'clock. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you, Mr. Colbert. We appreciate you. Okay, that's all that's on our agenda, but we have one more uh, budget to act on. It is the uh, CFSA budget from under Community and Human Services. And we just got this, so I'll give the committee a moment to look at this. And I believe is Miss Davis. Okay, Miss Davis is going to act on this or talk about this. Good afternoon again. Thank you, Miss um, Davis. This is the uh, match budget for the family preservation. It's out of gaming, and so uh, with the with the family preservation. Not, the promoting safe and stable families uh, budget uh, requires a 25% match. So the uh, federal award this year was $414,000. And, and 14, 14, $414,034. And so uh, these line items are just, they match up with what is in the family preservation I want to call it family preservation, but it's promoting safe and stable families budget at 25%. So you'll see some reductions because the amount last year for the federal budget was higher. And so these line items are just adjusted to 25% of what's in the federal budget. 
Thank you. Are there questions for Ms. Davis regarding this budget worksheet? Any questions from Council online? Ms. Davis, I have a question for clarification. Yes. Your name is Elizabeth, but you go by Ann. It's Elizabeth Ann Davis, and I go by Ann, okay, yes. Because it's Elizabeth on this form. Okay, thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. A move. A motion, a motion to approve from Representative Huff. Is there a second? Second. Second by Representative Gouge. Roll call vote, please. Robert Huff. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. And Anna Marshall. Yes. Leonard Gouge. Yes. I'm sure you got four in favor and zero against. Four in favor and zero against. This budget is approved, Ms. Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that completes our budgets. Um, we are down to other business. Is there any business, other business to be, uh, to be given at this time? Seeing none or hearing none, we're down to announcements. The only announcement that I have, I just made a while ago, that the budget hearings that were scheduled for tomorrow are postponed till Tuesday uh, at one o'clock. And we're down to the adjournment. Are there any other announcements from anyone from the committee? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we're down to adjournment and benediction. And I will ask uh, Representative Gouge to do our benediction. We are adjourned at 4.26 p.m. Thank you and have a good evening.